You're probably going to disagree with what I'm about to say right now. Watching the news is bad for you. Let me tell you a story. When I was a kid, when I was younger, way back in the Jurassic period, I was about 16 years old, I really got into a mood of improving myself, right? I used to be a kid that was like just going where the wind blows, just kind of like not doing anything intentionally really. I was just like doing schoolwork and just lazing around afterwards and just not doing anything. But at 16, I was like, something needs to change, right? I'm going to do things. I'm going to become a really good person. And so something switched in my brain, right? I just started to really want to improve myself. I watched a bunch of like improvement videos like Ali Abdal and I read books and things like that. And it just sparked something in my brain. And I wanted to do all of these good habits, right? Like I took all of that self-improvement content and I gobbled it up, absolutely. I would wake up early in the morning, like cold, dark winter mornings at nighttime. I would get up at 5 a.m. and go for a 5K run before school. It'd be like minus four degrees. My toes would be freezing, but I'd do that run and fast as well. I'd be getting better and better every single day in my times. And then I would eat my porridge. I'd like make my porridge with like some oats and fruits and milk and things like that. Super healthy, super like nutritious. And then I'd cycle up the hill to school so I could get there early and get some work done before everyone else. And I'd be, I remember I'd be boiling. I'd be like wearing all these layers and a jacket and everything and cycling up that hill. I'd be roasting when I got to school. So I'd be at school early and I'd be doing my work and then I'd look around at everyone arriving after me thinking oh yeah these guys have just rolled out of bed and driven to school in their mum's Range Rovers and I would legit think I'm like oh I'm better than these people look how much work I've gotten done before they've even opened their eyes so for breakfast I had something healthy so like porridge with fruit in it berries and bananas for lunch I'd have something equally healthy as I watched the people around me with their, their crisp packets and bottles of fizzy drink and just thinking like yeah I'm, I'm eating really healthy and these guys are like yeah that that food's not good for me and at lunchtime I would just sacrifice my my leisure time to just go to the gym so I'd take my lunch break I'd go to the gym and I'd just eat my lunch th throughout the lessons like you're not supposed to eat in lessons but I would just like sneak in my pocket I'm like just eat my food during the lesson like in physics English whatever it was I'd just be sitting at the back just munching on something and I'd be focused on my studies I'd like stay for a couple hours after school like in the school building just doing work in like the library or whatever just to get all my homework done and revise a bit more before I got home and I'd cycle back home in the dark winter nights I remember I had, I had like a big high-vis jacket so that the the cars could see me and everything and so it wouldn't be so dangerous and I'd cycle back home in the dark I wouldn't have much time left I would just like you know read a book, listen to a podcast as, you know, I drifted off to sleep that night and slept super early so I can wake up the next day early as well. And I was doing everything right. I was like, I'm super productive. I'm amazing. I feel like there's no one like me. I felt like I was like the king of the hill, right? And this included the news as well. I heard that news was, watching the news was a productive thing to do. So I was like, you know, in the car on the way to school, if I wasn't cycling, in the cycle, maybe in my earphones, I'd be listening to the news and on like my, my Facebook feed. At the time it was Facebook more, that was more popular like back 10 years ago. It wasn't Instagram or TikTok. These things didn't really exist, right? And on Facebook, there was these like news channels like Now This and other channels like that. And on YouTube, Philip DeFranco and people like that would talk about the news all the time. And I would feel so productive by listening to the news because people tell me, or society would tell me that this is a productive thing to do. You should know about the world. You should know about the world news, about politics, about this happening here, this happening there. You should know about these things and that's a good thing to do. So I was like, yes, I'm being productive, listening to the news. Aren't I great as a person? Wonderful. Like I thought, who at my age is watching the news? I'm so productive. I'm so beyond my age. I'm so mature. And that was until a single moment where I was reading a book called The 4-Hour Workweek by Tim Ferriss, right? And this is a business book, but he also has a lot of very decent life advice in there as well. And one of those bits of life advice is... I don't watch the news, right? This is what Tim Ferriss says. And this is a guy I really respected. I was like, okay, he's not watching the news. I thought the news was a good thing, right? So I questioned everything in this single moment in time. And he was saying, news is BS. It's not productive. Like any of it, right? Celebrity gossip, world news, the politics, anything like that. It's not a good use of your time. And it clicked for me, right? I didn't really care about watching the news. It was just something that I did just to prove myself to be productive like people were saying it's productive so oh just to just to to show i'm productive i have to watch the news right it's like reading a, a bunch of 100 books just to kind of prove to someone that oh i'm so well read like i would get this message you've got to be up to date you've got to know what's happening in the world this is absolutely necessary for you to know it's important but that message was entirely false watching the news is not productive like i asked myself the question what even is the news right the news is a business, right? They run on profits. And so for them to win, they have to grab your attention. 
make you feel these intense emotions of, of fear and anxiety. And the more you watch, the more people that watch, the more money they make. And so they are motivated by money, not by how or what is good for you. They don't care about you. They care about the money. So they'll do anything they want. As It doesn't matter if they hurt you. They care about the money. It doesn't benefit you in any way, but it only increases your stress. It's completely irrelevant to you, like stuff happening like halfway around the world. Like what does that benefit you? It's a complete waste of your time and mental bandwidth. And it's information that's irrelevant the next day, right? It's a it's a bad investment in time, right? To study these things. Like if you study like maths, you probably need that in life. Like generally speaking, if you invest money into like buying a house, you probably need a house in your life, right? If you invest money into learning something that's only relevant today, it's a huge waste of an investment in your kind of the time that you're investing into learning the stuff. Let me show you something I saw the other day. I'll put it up here on the screen. And when I saw this, I laughed out loud because I've never seen something so true. And it just perfectly summarizes the world news in just four words. Some bullshit happening somewhere, right? Like pick any news article, any news headline. You can't not summarize it using those four words. Some bullshit happening somewhere, right? That's all the news. That's all they say. That's it. And I know some of you are thinking that I'm incredibly stupid for not watching the news, that I might, you know, I might die because I'm, I miss something so important, like World War Three or something like that. Listen, if there's a piece of news that's so important to me that it affects my world, then I'd probably hear about it without having to watch the news, right? I said watching the news is bad. I didn't say that you have to live under a rock and never speak to anyone ever again. Just having a normal social life does the job. If something major is going on, enough people will be talking about it for you to know. I haven't watched the news in 10 years. Do you think I just missed COVID? No, I lived through that bullshit. I knew that Biden became president because of a Bo Burnham song. And everyone keeps talking about this Israel-Palestine thing. I don't even know what that's about. And I don't care. I have no idea what's going on there and I don't want to know. I don't care. I hear people bring that stuff up on, on podcasts and I skip it like a jump rope. Like literally, I heard it one time and I thought, great, another piece of irrelevant world news. And then everyone started talking about it. And I was like, ah, okay, I guess that's what the spotlight is on now. And that's the other thing, right? Think about it. The news, the news companies control the spotlight of what everyone is paying attention to, right? Guys, look at this. Look at this. Look at this. No, no, no. Forget about that. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. That's what the news is. I think about it. There was COVID for two years. Oh, everyone, look at this. This is so important. We need to talk about this. We need to talk about this. And then we forget all about that when Putin invades Ukraine, right? Oh, Ukraine, look at this, guys. This is important. We need to talk about this. Like, actually ask yourself, why did we stop talking about COVID? Because the spotlight moved. Do you think COVID just disappeared overnight? No, we just stopped talking about it because the news wanted you to stop talking about it. It's like, hey, look at all this other stuff that's going on. And Ukraine was in the spotlight. And then we forgot all about that when this Israel-Palestine stuff came up. Ah, big important thing that we all need to care about. And then we will forget about that when the next big thing comes up. Mark my words, quote me on this. From the river to the sea, whatever that means, you will forget about it in two years time. I promise you. I promise you there will be this next big news story and that will be left in the past. Mark my words. Like, don't you see this? It's a scam. Like, none of it was ever important to you in the first place, but you care because the news wants you to feel that fear, that anxiety. It's the spotlight that they are in control of. They want us to be focused on one thing, like a cat chasing a laser, like an NPC, like a sheep distracted, living in fear and anxiety to make sure that we are so weak that we rely upon the government to support us, to make sure that we're not strong enough to be disruptive to the system. And you're probably thinking at this point, this guy's a bit of a conspiracy nut here, isn't he? Look, the truth is the media and the government shake hands on a regular basis. I think about it. COVID was an exercise in government control. They locked us in our houses, enforced ridiculous rules that had zero scientific backing, and they forced us to take government mandated vaccines that were created by big pharma companies motivated by profit to rush out just some half-baked vaccine that had awful side effects. And you probably just about remember those people who refused to take the vaccine. We call them stupid. We call them selfish. And we forgot all about that. They don't look stupid now, do they? The government used the news media to send messages of anxiety and panic so that they can test how much we comply, how much they can control us. Like, doesn't that sound familiar? I like, think about what Hitler achieved with compliance in Nazi Germany. Everyone did what they were told. Same as COVID. So think about what the news does to you. Think about the message that they want to put into your brain and lodge deep inside there fear, anxiety, and why do they want to send that message? For money, for profit, for control. And I don't want to get political in this video, but right now they seem to hate masculine men and feminine women as well. So we, as a tribe of masculine men, we need to stand up against this effect. Don't just stand there and be brainwashed by your TV or phone screen. 
Don't be an NPC, a sheep like the rest of them. Become a thinker and think for yourself and become part of this movement against this media bullshit. And here on this channel, I'm building a movement of masculine men who are proud thinkers amongst these pathetic sheep. So if you would like to join me in that movement, scroll down and click subscribe. And I'm also currently working on a community page as a place for us to converse and meet up. So stay tuned and you'll hear about that soon. And with that being said, thanks for watching. I hope this video has helped you. I hope this video has helped you think about life and be more careful about what you watch and how it influences you. So thanks for watching. Knowledge is power and the power is yours. Take care.